In this demonstration, you're going to learn about some of the different functions provided with your charts and graphs. All right, in this case, I've already created a histogram. Uh, the layer that I use to create the histogram is this Colorado median household income layer. Uh, this shows median household income information by census tract. And as I kind of zoom in on these census tracts, you can kind of get a feel for what those looks like. They're just uh, polygon census tracts. And so I've already generated histogram. Uh, the histogram was based on the estimate field. Uh, the estimate field, this data actually comes from the uh, U.S. Census Bureau. This is an ACS data set, Amer American Community Survey data set, uh, that gives you estimates of different uh, census variables, this one being uh, median household income. So if we look at the attribute table for Colorado median household income, uh, of course, you'll see the census tract name. There's a GOID. Um, <clears throat> the field that we use to generate this chart, though, is the estimate chart. And that's going to be an estimate for each census tract of the median household income in that census tract. So that's what we used in the generation of the histogram that you see here. And, um, of course, the histogram, uh, you see the information here on the right-hand side. There's the estimate for the number. Uh, of course, our, our summary statistics here on the right-hand side, we're only plotting uh, the mean here. So you'll notice at the top of your chart, um, you've got a row of tools. And, uh, you know, there's multiple tools here. We just kind of work our way left to right. The first button is the Properties button. That simply displays the Chart Properties uh, pane that you see here. So there, in this case, there's no need to, to click a button like that. But if you wanted to, you know, if you had closed the Chart Properties pane and needed to reopen that, you could always click the button to open, reopen the Properties uh, chart properties for that particular chart. Now, moving on, we have some export functions that allow you to export uh, your data. Uh, in this case, we can export as a graphic. So this would allow you to specify a location uh, as well as, as a name. So we might call this one, you know, CEO median household income. And you've got multiple options here, SVGs, PNGs, JPEGs. So if we just select uh, PNG, in this case, I'll put it on the desktop. I'll just find a location for it, hit save. <clears throat> and then at that point, if I open up the location, you'll see that it's created a PNG file in this case uh, for the file name that we gave it. If I double click on that, now you'll see that we have a PNG, an image file format of that, uh, that chart that we created. So if you've got multiple options there, you can also export your data out as a table too, if you'd like to do that. This is available on some charts, uh, but not all. Now moving along, you have several, uh, a couple of filter functions here that allow you to filter uh, your data either by selection uh, or by extent or by both. You can actually click both of these buttons at the same time to filter uh, both by selection and extent. By default, what you're gonna see is uh, every record in your uh, layer is gonna be presented in the chart. Uh, but there may be times when you want to filter that out a little bit. So uh, if we create, for example, a selection set, and I'm just gonna define a, a rectangle and just, you know, just very quickly create a selection set here. You'll see as soon as you do that, those records are of course gonna be highlighted on the map, but they're also highlighted in the chart. Uh, they're also of course highlighted in the table as well. Now at this point, if I click on the filter by selection button, what that's gonna do is it's gonna filter the chart so that it's only displaying the currently selected records. So I'll click on filter by selection and you can see how that changes the chart. And at this point, uh, the only records being displayed in the histogram are the selected records. Now you can also enable filtering by extent. So in this case, of course, all of the currently selected features are visible, so it really didn't change the map. But you can see now if I make some changes for example, if I just zoom in on this particular area, now my chart changes as well. All right? and that's because I have two filters set. All right? Filtering by extent, which is only going to display records that are currently visible in the map uh, in the chart, as well as filtering by selection. Now you can, you know, of course, turn, turn these on and off as needed to, uh, to filter in different ways. All right, other things you can do here, uh, most of these are pretty straightforward and obvious. You can open the attribute table uh, for the chart. Uh, you can switch your selection set. So if you have a selection set and you want to switch it, uh, you can do that. There's a clear button here for clearing your selection set. Um, not, not all charts are capable of being rotated. In this case, uh, histogram is, is not something you can rotate. I'll, I'll show you how to rotate here in just a second with a, uh, with a bar chart. Uh, but some charts can be rotated. Uh, there's also a set of tools here that allow you to select by rectangle, polygon, or lasso. 
So in this case, if I select uh, by rectangle, you can draw a rectangle on the map and it will, I'm sorry, on the chart. And uh, as soon as you um, define that selection set, it also uh, selects the associated records in your map as well. And then finally, we've got a couple of options here for zoom mode that allows you to zoom in and zoom out on your data. You can also reset the navigation. So zooming allows you to zoom in on a part of your chart and then you can reset that view if you need to. Now, I do also want to show you uh, the ability to rotate. So in this case, I've got a bar chart. Uh, this just shows median uh, wildfire size by decade. This uh, is simply a bar chart. Bar charts are capable of being rotated. And uh, so if I click on the rotate button, you'll notice it rotates it, uh, the, the axis, right? And so now you have the X uh, showing up on the Y. The Y has been flipped over to the X. And of course, you can switch back if you need to. All right, that's it for this time.